Okay, we had a quiz yesterday in calculus. I'm going to go over this briefly. If h of x equals 3x to the 2 thirds power, what is h prime of negative 8? Well, the first thing I would do is take a derivative of this function here, which using the power rule is going to be 2 thirds times 3 x to the power of 2 thirds minus 1, which is negative 1 third. And 3 over 3 cancel. And so you're going to have 2 over square root, or cube root, I said square root, cube root of x. And let's see if I'm forgetting something to add in terms of root. Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. So h h prime of negative eight is going to be two over cube root of negative eight, and cube root of negative eight is negative two, so we're going to get negative one. So that negative one is our answer to this problem number one. Good job, Mr. Neige. Thank you. Thank you. You've been helping me out, Aaron. Give me some confidence. Okay, what is a, given fx equals x cubed minus 2x, what is the equation of line tangent to the graph of fx where x equals 2? Well, my students really are unfailingly telling me that we need two things. Slope and a point. A slope and a point. They don't hesitate to tell me, so I appreciate that in them. So we're going to find, uh, you don't have to do these first thing, but I sometimes I just like to go get the point first. So we're finding the y coordinate to this point. So 2 minus 2. So 2 cubed, that's going to be 8 minus 2, that's going to be four, right? Yes. So four. And slope, to find slope, we're going to find f prime of, of two, but first we'll find f prime of x, which is going to be three x squared minus two. And then f prime of two is equal to three times two squared minus two. So we get three times four minus two is ten. So we call that, I call that m sub t equals 10. So, I don't know if we're off the edge there on that a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go over and make sure. So anyway, our, our equation is going to be y minus y1, so y minus 4 equals 10 times quantity x minus x1. Now, one thing I saw, kind of as a minor mistake, I saw, I think I saw a couple people fail to parenthesize this x minus 2. You've got to remember that point slope form. Uh, the next, what is the derivative of the equation y equals 2 over x squared? Well, in calculus-friendly form, that's going to be 2x to the negative 2 power. So y prime is going to be equal to negative 2 times 2, or negative 4, x to the negative 3 power. So y prime is going to be equal to negative 4 over x cubed. I was so shocked when I remembered that. You were shocked you remembered it? Okay, well that's good. Good You're job, sure. Mr. G. Yeah, well good job to you too, Aaron and Kylie. Appreciate that. Now the average rate of change, average rate of change, there's formula for it, average rate of change is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So I would say b is 16 and a is 1. So if we say, if we plug in 16 for b, Right, so it's going to be equal to 3 times square root of 16. 
minus 3 times square root of 1 over 16 minus 1. And so here, 3 times square root of 16, that's going to be 12. And 3 times square root of 1 is 3, 15. So we're going to get 9 fifteenths, which equals 3 fifths. Does that look right? That looks like right. that's it, right? I hope so. 9 fifteenths. All right. Uh, last one here. What is 2 times the integral from 0 to 4 of x dx? Basically, what we're finding is the area under the curve. So we have the function is, is y equals x. So here it is, y equals x. And we're going from 0 to 4. Well, so happens that this is a this forms area in the curve is this triangle whose area is four times four divided by two, which equals eight. But then we're multiplying all that by two. So two times eight equals sixteen. So sixteen is our correct answer for this one. So, so that's the quiz. I hope, Maddie, you see this? Maddie. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to this right here. I, where are you at? Problem 20. Looking the entire time. Oh, oh what happens when number 19 turns up the whole page? Well, what happens, you might have to recruit another piece of scratch paper. You got it here. Oh, sorry, I didn't just copy it off. Oh, okay, that's okay. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Are we going to do problem 16, 17, 18? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know yet. I want, I want to look at 20. Okay, I'm just going to do 20 where 17 is. Yeah, let's do 20. And then if you need to recruit another piece of scratch paper, that might be a good idea. Yeah, let's see here. Thank you. All right. Are you working on this? Kylie looks like she's working. How oh, are we supposed to be like doing it? Yeah, I can try. Yes, Gary. Uh, try to do it and try to see if you can look at 19. You need a piece of scratch paper, Aaron. You okay on that? I got, I got that. You got that paper, okay. I have 19. Okay. I have a question. Yes, uh-huh. All right. What do I do with the little five right there? Would it just be like five and then the parentheses to the one half? Yeah, what this is going to be is in the rewrite, this is going to be y equals... One fifth. Who said one fifth? Me. Very good. Yes. Uh, Very good. Thank you, Gavin. Oh, okay. I remember uh, He's learning, Mr. G. Great. Oh, yes, yes. Gavin. All right, Gavin. Yes, so that's just a... This is just the first thing I usually do in these problems, make a calculus, what I call a calculus rewrite, yeah. the radical form and the rational form, and then you can kind of work from there. Oh, that's, yeah. Okay, while you continue to work on that, I'm going to continue to work up here and we'll just kind of see how things work out. Be quiet, let me see.
Oh boy. I need a calculator for that one. For this one here? That's a big number that I just got. Just you need a five right. this side? Huh? Negative one fifth. Oh, you might have already done it. Oh, it's one fifth. Yeah, so. Yeah, this might actually be a calculator problem, come to think of it. I got a pretty simple number though, so I think it's good. Yeah, and they're engineered a lot of times to be simple, but so I'm getting like uh numerator I'm getting four times. Six, I'm getting 40 up here. Yeah, I got a real easy answer. What'd you get? I'm getting uh, five so down that. here. <laughs> and then we have the fifth root of, we have, let's see, that's going to be three times two squared, that's 12, plus eight, so that's 20. To the fourth power. Oh, 20. Well, isn't that right? Because that's 3 times 4 squared. Is that is that third? That's a test of the third. Oh, hang on a second. Then I, get, then I mistranscribe. Yeah, that's not oh, right. I mistranscribe. That's a fun word. Yeah, that's not going to be that. It's going to be 6 times, 3 times 8. So that's 24 plus 8, that's 32 to the fourth power. Does that look right? Yes. So 32 to the fourth power. Which is a big number. Yeah, see, the thing about it is the fifth. Sometimes it's easier to take the fifth root first and then make it to the fourth. Oh, that's smart. Um, and so... So that'd be two to the fourth, which is 16. The, the fifth root of, of... Yeah, fifth root, so it would be two to the fourth. And that'll cancel to be eight on top. I'll do that too, right? Eight. And down here we have two to the fourth, which is 16. And then we have, uh, is that basically it? So yeah, a lot of simplification going in there. And then these, one thing we, have, one thing that's easy to forget when you work out something this long like that is to remember what you're being asked here. So we have y minus two is one half x minus two. Did anybody check that in the calculator? I did. You did. That's what you got. Yeah. Looks good. Okay, very good. What I want to do today is go into the note start in the note card 15 which is vertical tangent lines yeah. vertical tangent lines okay mm -hmm. and we're going to find the point where where f of x has vertical tangent line and what we do is find f prime of x and set the denominator of the derivative equal to zero and then solve for x and then we then step three is we substitute that value of x back into the original function and then we have the y value the point of tangency so graphically what that looks like is let's say we have a let's say we have a, a function here that has a vertical point of tangency right here And we take the first derivative of this function, we call this f of x, and we 
after we find f prime of x and set the de denominator of the derivative equal to zero and solve for x and so we'll see an example of that but then once we go ahead and plug back in we're going to see we're going to find our point of tangency which is going to be a vertical tangent line is going to be what kind of equation it'll be an x equals type equation okay so now we have this situation here so I want you to do that take the so do number one try to follow the steps on that and we'll go over it together in just, just a minute Okay, so so step one is take the derivative of this, right? Yeah. So take the derivative. Well, I'm gonna first put g of x equals three minus x to the one third power. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. And so g prime of x is going to be equal to. Uh, is that going to be negative one third? Is that right? X to the negative two thirds. And so that's going to be equal to, let's see, negative, uh, looks like it'll be negative one, right? Over, we have three, and we have the cube root of x squared. Does that look right? That's, yeah. That's what you got. So now if we plug in, uh, we set the denominator equal to zero, right? Mm -hmm. So if we set the denominator equal to zero, what is x equal to? Oh. Three cube root of x squared equals zero. What is x equal to? equal to zero? Yep. That's right. And really, and what you can do, you can sort of, if you want to overcomplicate things, you could divide by three first, take the cube root, but every operation you do to zero is still going to leave that as zero, right? So that you're, going to, you're going to have that. So, uh, and now we have our x value where the derivative is undefined. So what do we do with our function now? We plus g of zero, right? Mm -hmm. Equals three minus cube root of zero, which is three. And so, yeah, so this is going to be our, what is our point of tangency? It's going to be 0, 3. It's the point of tangency, a vertical tangency. A point of tangency. It doesn't say, it doesn't say find the equation of the, of the line, but if it did, what would that equation be? be x is equal to zero. That's oh. will be our yeah. that'll be our equation. So here what I want you to do is take a look at number two. Do that one. I 
think two ends up being sort of a similar looking problem. And we don't have a lot of problems there because it's hard to get it's hard to get problems that way. So vertical tangent lines don't come up a lot, but when they do, you're going to be what? You'll be ready for it. I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. So did you do number two already? <laughs> you smile. It's working out too. Very good. Good work. I appreciate the, today's class. Some of you working together, helping people to understand the class as much as possible. So this is what I got for the derivative of that. Does that seem right? Yeah. Seem right. Sure. Okay. So what do we what do we do next? Step two is. Is that equal to zero? Set our denominator equal to zero. Actually, that's step one still, right? So we say square root of point four minus x squared is equal to zero. So what would that be? Square that so we get four minus x squared is equal to zero. So I'm going to get x squared is equal to four and so x is equal to what? Plus or minus two so on this one, we should get two points of ta tangency, right? Mm -hmm. And I've tried to tell you what this thing is before, but let's go ahead and we can just plug back in, right? F of two is equal to square root of four minus two squared which is which is going to be zero, right? Yeah. And it's going to be the same thing for negative two, right? Because you'll have you'll have the same thing because you have four minus negative two squared, which is also going to be zero. So what are what are the points points of tangency? Well, let's see. I think it's two. Because x is right left, 2, 0, negative 2, 0. Okay, what type of thing are we talking about in this function here? What is this thing, this function? I've talked about it in this class before. What is it? Anybody remember? Okay, this thing right here. What is this thing here? 
to semicircle uh, of radius of radius. So, so we're talking about right here. This is where your points of tangency are. So you got a semicircle. Yeah, that's a semicircle right there. Okay, and really, really, that's it for vertical tangent lines. Now, the only thing I want to do, we have we have a little bit of class time left, so I want to I want to just mention briefly. We're going to come back in full force on this tomorrow, I believe. Is uh, is a note card 16, which is the mean value theorem. And mean value theorem is the second of our major theorems. What was the first one? Oh, it was um. What was the first theorem we talked about in here? Oh, oh. remember. Well, this is the second theorem, second major theorem. What was the first one? Um, well. It has something to do with instantaneous. It has something to do with what? We talked about talked about weight loss. That's one of the things I talked about. And we talk, I think we mentioned it last year in pre-calculus too. The one I'm thinking of starts with an I. Intangible. Uh, Inter intermediate. Um, intermediate. Value. Oh, no, theorem. Yeah. I just get that. Intermediate value. Intermediate value theorem. The hot foundation yeah. is no card six. No card six. Intermediate value that theorem. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. Anyway, this is the second major one. And basically what it is, mean value theorem, if, if the if the conditions are met, it means there's going to be a point where the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. Oh. And so it's going to be used in conjunction with average rate of change. Hey, that equation was on our last quiz. Yeah, uh -huh. that's right. So this is the one, this is a go-to one. And what I'm doing right now is I'm starting to share this equation with even with my Algebra 2 classes which is really a version of the slope equation. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to go pick up on that tomorrow. And that'll be